Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand, fundamental and technical forex and gold analysis. If you're new, a warm welcome to you and an equally warm welcome to you if you are returning. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share with your fellow trading colleagues if you find the uh, information I provide every week uh, uh, of use. So um, I just wanted to also say as well, um, to the people that uh, turned up to the webinar. I hope you found a lot of value in the uh, fundamental analysis um, webinar that I uh, did and also as well uh, Mark Chapman's uh, you know market maker footprints of the market maker um, as well some really really um, uh, great value there and uh, should keep you on in good stead and hopefully you know will improve go some ways to improving you know your trading and looking at the market from a, a totally different perspective as to what is really kind of peddled online anyways um Let's get into the uh, some uh, some weekly news and um, trading economics. Zooming in, so investors brace for another roller coaster week. So a standoff between Russia and Ukraine will dominate again uh, the markets, with Moscow changing the rhetoric rhetoric on a daily basis, and the U.S. continuing to give warnings of an impending invasion. So again, risk off sentiment. Risk off meaning that there's a lot of fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Money tends to um, flow into and out of uh, safe haven uh, assets and away from um, uh, you know uh, higher yielding assets, I guess. So um, so yeah, you know again it's it's maybe a bit of more of a difficult uh, week uh, to trade, but there will be some sort of resolution at some point. And when there is, and there's a bit more clarity in the market, you know, there's going to be, I think, a lot more opportunity. I tend to uh, want to or prefer to trade, um, you know, risk off, uh, sorry, risk on assets, meaning that I'm looking for um, higher yielding uh, commodity currencies, for example, um, and uh, basically where central banks are looking to, uh, you know, high crates over central banks that are not, right? So there's a divergence uh, for those of you that attended the webinar. So on the data front, market services and manufacturing PMIs from the US, UK and Germany, France, the euro area and Japan will be in the spotlight. In the US, investors will again be looking for signs of whether the Federal Reserve would turn more hawkish, meaning that they may start to hike rates um, uh, a bit a bit sooner right as far or I say a bit sooner but um, I guess more than expected so um, there's that going on uh, potentially this week so let's get into the, uh, the, uh, the the charts and starting off on the dollar index so the dollar index and um, looking at the dollar index which is just a measure of dollar strength against uh, the major currencies like the euro the yen and the pound um, Really, my bias is to the upside. Again, this is not financial advice or trading advice, but my bias is really to the upside. And my bias is really driven by, again, the fundamentals on um, on the central bank, um, the Fed, really uh, top Fed official, uh, you know, back March liftoff as consensus takes shape. So what does that, you know, really mean is that uh, two top Federal Reserve officials back to raising rates, right? Hiking rates is generally uh, seen as appreciative, um, should appreciate the currency um, in March to curb the hottest inflation in 40 years and start to shrink their bloated balance sheet in coming months, signaling a consensus against uh, more uh, more hawkish action. So, um, the, the, the remarks on Friday by Federal uh, Lael, I think that's how you pronounce the name, her name, uh, Brainard of New York Fed President John Williams, as well as Chicago Fed Charles Evans uh, showed officials eager to get tightening underway, so hiking underway, rising of interest rates uh, without seeking a supersized interest rate hike or a move uh, before the next scheduled meeting. So, um you know they they are on the hiking cycle. It's really a debate as to how much they want to really hike, right? So that really is the uh, the topic. But for me, as long as the Fed uh, are hiking rates, uh, my bias is really just understanding uh, if prices pull back in the short term that I do want to be a buyer, right? So if prices pull down to this demand zone around here, 
um, and I get some confluence on obviously some other dollar pairs like dollar yen, dollar Swiss, for example, then I'm looking for uh, buy trades on those pairs as well. So just use the dollar index really as, as confluence and you see prices come down into a demand zone and prices start to turn up and also prices are in the um, uh, in a demand zone, for example, with the dollar yen or the dollar Swiss and you want to be a buyer of the dollar against those pairs. I'm not saying that you should, um, but if you do, then that just adds, you know, really some confluence. So again, pretty much nothing, you know, has changed uh, for me anyway from that perspective. If you are looking at getting short, really the, the best probably area to look for any kind of short trades um, in the short term, I guess, if prices do really come up to this area here, uh, this area of supply, um, and then you may want to look for either, you know, taking take profit uh, targets potentially on obviously your currency pairs because that is obviously been expensive for the dollar, right? And this is seen as a potential bargain at the moment. So um, highs and lows of ranges are always uh, um, uh, prudent to take, you know, some, some either all total profits or partial profits, right? As a, and a potential profit target. So for me, my bias is still long dollar and uh, let's see what uh, the other pairs are, are saying. So we're moving on to the dollar yen. Dollar yen, um, so we've got really on the dollar yen a strength divergence of six. So um, with that being said, six, in case you don't know, uh, is is really one of the highest strength divergences that you can have, meaning that the uh, the dollar, the US dollar is ranked um, strong and the uh, the, uh, the, the yen is ranked actually weak. The, the, the highest strength divergence is actually seven. And um, so we've got uh, the dollar yen as ranked as, uh, as six. So for me, um, again, buys all the way. So looking for really kind of pullbacks now is a decent um, area to look for any kind of long trades. Of course, the more prices come down, the cheaper, you know, um, that exchange rate, but if you do want to look for any kind of long trades right now on an intraday time frame, so what you're looking at is higher time frames and looking down, you can either take that on obviously the the, the higher time frame, or you could look down into a lower time frame and see if there's any um, you know uh, 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 entries that you want to look for. Personally, um, I think probably a bit lower if prices do come a bit lower. I prefer for um, a lower price for me to look for any kind of uh, long trades. So let's see about that. Now is okay though, now is fine. But uh, if prices don't hold there this week and prices do fall a little bit based off of, again, risk off sentiment, right? Risk off, the Japanese yen will strengthen, yeah, unfortunately. Um, say unfortunately, if you're long dollars, then obviously um, it, for the short term, it's unfortunate. But actually what risk sentiment does or risk off sentiment does is pushes prices down to where, you know, you can get in um, for cheaper, right? Because when risk comes back on, then you've got a lot more upside potential. So that's the way I look at, um, you know, risk on and risk off. Uh, so for me, just looking at really uh, uh, buy trades and it's just a case of, you know, where prices may want to turn around. Again, if you do want to get short on this currency pair, then you are really kind of looking, I would probably say this area right here to look for any kind of short trades So any pullbacks that would be it. But with Russia tensions and risk off sentiment potentially um, coming into the market, we could see prices come down a little bit. Um, and if so, again, for me, I'm still looking at, you know, buy trades uh, for the medium to long term. Um, moving on to the dollar Swiss and the dollar Swiss, uh, we have again, really nothing's, you know, changed as much as much uh, prices have come down to a really nice area and in fact I did actually want to get long here but I missed my entry as I was um, actually uh, having the webinar that uh, on the uh, Thursday night so my entry actually would have been on in this candle here but by the time I realized in the morning um, prices had moved you know way above where I wanted to get long so I'm never you know chasing price if prices do come down a bit more then um, I will look for potential entry in and around that zone um, as I am long dollars and I am uh, short on the uh, trying to sell the uh, Swiss franc but again just be cautious of um, risk off sentiment and when I say be cautious more you know understand that you don't really want to put on your usual position risk size in a risk off environment if you're trying to get long um, 
So if you normally risk, for example, I don't know, I would never advise anyone risk 1%, but if you're you know, risking 1% on a trade, maybe you want to go in at 0.5% you know, on, on, on your trade or 0.2%, you know, which is really what I would recommend, 0.1%, 0.2% um, on, on, on trades, because what was told to me was if you can't handle peanuts, then uh, how are you going to handle coconuts? So if you can't handle, you know, if you're not profitable at larger position sizes, if you can't do it at small position sizes, then you definitely can't do it at bigger position sizes. And just from the perspective of if even if you've got a you know a large account, um, what you'll find is is that um, you know when the larger your account, actually the smaller your position size will tend to get. There's you know trying to you know risk one percent on a on a on a you know five six figure account isn't necessarily the best thing to, in, in the world. And uh, yeah, anyways, some traders do, some traders don't. But um, personally. Um, you know, I wouldn't risk one. I don't risk one percent on on trades. I'm more risking, you know, somewhere around zero point five, zero point four percent on on each trade. Anyways, um, from that perspective, uh, yeah, for me, I'm 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 long on this currency pair. So looking for potential entry in and around here. If you do want to get short on this currency pair, because uh, you're buying into some sort of risk off sentiment, then you're looking at that supply zone in and around here for a uh, for a short trade if prices do pull back. Um, ultimately, I do want to get long um, in and around this zone here, but again, nobody knows where prices will uh, turn. If prices don't turn around here, prices could turn around down here, right? Because the cheaper you go, um, the more undervalued you are and uh, the more bargain prices. So let's see what happens um around here but again my bias really is to uh to the upside uh moving on to the um the dollar cad and the dollar cad again you've got two uh strong currencies and uh, i've been saying this for for a while and again those of you who attended my uh, uh webinar uh would understand that when you get two uh, uh central banks that are hiking rates what should happen uh, or, or cutting rates, you should get, a, uh, I guess, what's known as a value auction. Some people would know that as a sideways ranging market, right? Um, so this is it. This is what you're seeing. And it's not me saying, you know, it's not me you know, saying that it's uh, this is what's going to happen, but this is what's likely to happen and it's playing out in the market. So you have to kind of adjust your strategy if you are looking at um, trading too strong or too weak currencies, too appreciating currencies, too depreciating currencies. And uh, in this case, in a straight fight, you've got, you know, two central banks that are looking to uh, high rates. Canada are looking to high rates. So again, you're getting this uh, value auction where buyers and sellers are in agreement where prices are uh, uh, between this 127 uh, or 128 really um 1.28 and then 1.26 maybe uh you know five area um but for me i'm not interested in this pair but if you are then i would probably say again uh, any short trades into that zone or any uh long trades into that zone depending on which one you want to be a buyer or a seller of but for me i'm not interested in that pair at all i'm looking for divergences uh moving on to the pound dollar so the pound dollar again you've got two central banks that are looking to um high crates you know soon so again the analysis really hasn't changed and you're seeing i guess more uh more of a uh, sideways moving market a value auction where price is really being accepted within this range so um for me again not really interested in this currency pair although uh, if you're looking for a short trade i think the best area is to look for a short trade around that 137 area as this level has been touched several times and the more times the level is touched the the weaker it becomes um, and if you do want to be a buyer then you're probably looking at i'll probably say anywhere probably down below um down to this 1.346 area for a uh, for a long trade um so that's really where uh, where we are with the, the pound dollar and i guess looking at the pound as well there was actually um uh where were we now sorry the uh here we go so we've got a uh, 1990s lesson uh recession is the, is the price of curbing uk inflation so um 
what's happening is, and it's not just exclusive to the UK, it's exclusive everywhere, right? Is the fact that living standards are being squeezed, right? Because of higher inflation. So UK inflation now running at hottest in three decades. The uh, the US inflation is running the hottest at four decades, right? So, um so it's it's inflation is a problem everywhere but what's also happening is 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 a horrible mix of a high covering in interest rates because um in order to combat inflation you need to hike interest rates so with that being said you know you've got higher borrowing and lending costs which you know hurts uh, households if you've got you know you, you're a mortgage you're a homeowner you, and you've got a mortgage on your home then you're going to be paying higher prices higher interest rates on your on your mortgage right and um, as well as just paying higher higher prices on energy costs and everything so central banks unfortunately are in a very um, delicate situation where they don't want to hike rates too much because otherwise it actually might you know tip a recession so rising unemployment and the recession have been a, have been the price that we have had to pay to get inflation down that price is well worth paying you know that was uh it was made 19, uh, may 16th 1991 the one when norman lamont the finance minister in john major's conservative uh, government uttered his famous words as the as the consumer prices uh index of inflation peaked at over eight percent yeah so this is just a historical context now does that mean you know the pound is a sell? Well, for me, no, because at the moment the pound, uh, the economy is still is 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 growing, right? But if you start to see uh, GDP start to um, you know stagnate or, or decrease, um, then you know there is uh, an issue there, right? There is a massive issue there. So um, let's see. For now, I think the pound is still a buy. Um, as long as the data supports that narrative and uh, let's see you know going forward uh, what happens with the pound but I'm you know a buyer of the pound for now uh, so any kind of pullbacks not necessarily on the dollar but with other currency pairs let's see what happens with that um, moving on to the euro dollar euro dollar so uh, last week's uh, analysis still on here let me just get rid of this and uh, really the uh, the um, I guess from a from a strength divergence uh, perspective and our, our fundamental analysis spreadsheet, the euro dollar is actually seven. The the the, um, the pound was actually uh, three. Um, in case I didn't mention it, um, but the pound was three, which isn't necessarily the best strength divergence in the world. Um, but the euro dollar is actually um, strength divergence of seven, which is actually one of the strongest divergences. And again, just seeing what's what really happened, you know, a couple of uh, or a week or so ago, where you're getting, you know, uh, uh, lower highs and lower lows, right? We've had that strength divergence there. Prices pulled back to a level, pulled back to that level, and and, and shorting, right? So. Um, from a fundamental pers perspective, you know, we know which way we should really want to, you know, look to trade. It doesn't mean that it's going to go down every single day, right? It doesn't doesn't make any sense. Um, but if prices do pull back, then you're just looking at cheaper prices really to look for any kind of sell trades. Um, now with the euro, uh, we've got uh, some news. So ECB officials edge towards a 2022 rate hike to stem inflation. So, um, you know, a debate about ending QE, a prerequisite for liftoff has begun, of course, um, because inflation is a problem. Uh, again, not just, you know, in the US or the UK, but really around everywhere. And uh, policymakers concerned about widening government bond spreads. So um, more European central bank officials are conceding that interest rates will likely need to uh, rise late, sorry, rates, let me read that again. Sorry, more European Central Bank officials are conceding that interest rates will likely need to rise late this year in the face of a stronger inflation outlook. So, um, again, uh, they are late to the party. So, although um, we do have, um, I think the path of least resistance is to the downside. I do think the downside is going to be capped. I don't think it's going to continue, you know, going down to the one tens, one 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 oh nines, etc. Because the rumor now has started that they may want to start to strengthen their currency. So with that being said, um, you know I do think the downside is potentially capped, but I also think that the dollar is is well ahead when it comes to um, uh, you know strengthening their currency. So we could get a pullback into the one fifteens, even into the one sixteens. But for me, 
I'm still looking at short trades at supply. You know, I'm only looking at one direction. I'm looking to buy the euro against the dollar. Although I am looking to buy the euro against uh, some other currencies, some weaker currencies. So um, from that perspective, yeah, it's just really kind of pullbacks. If prices do decide to you know, make lower lows, then you're looking at, again, a pullback to this area here, which would be a supply zone. Um, and then you're looking at, you know, just uh, some short trades there, right? If that's your bias, if you want to be a buyer of the dollar and a seller of the euro, but also as well um, concerning the euro is that economists are wondering, is the ECB about to make a policy error, right? So the policy error, the eurozone watchers see undershoot of 2% gold in the next two years. So some will have misstep, others doubt a hike will materialize. So although um, there are rumors of a potential hike, economists are um, a bit skeptical of that, yeah. Especially if 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 uh, hiking rates is um, unnecessary. If inflation may naturally uh, come back to their two percent target, then um, you know hiking rates may have been a policy error or a policy misstep. But let's see, you know what happens. Like I said, I, I, I'm a, I'm a seller of the euro in some cases, but against others, other currencies, I am actually a buyer. So let's again see what happens there in, in, in the euro dollar case i am actually a buyer of the uh, of the dollar over the euro moving on to the australian dollar um us dollar and the aussie dollar aussie us dollar i'm not really again a, a buyer or a seller of this currency pair not really trading this currency pair um the australian dollar um I think is a buy, just not against the US dollar. Um, and I think uh, when they start to high crates, I think price, if prices do pull back to this area here, I think that might be actually a decent buy. Um, so let's see what happens there. But I think again, the path of this resistance should be in the short term anyway, to the downside. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Really not much to kind of discuss uh, around there, especially maybe in a risk off environment, in a risk off environment, the, uh, the US dollar does strengthen more than the uh, Australian dollar. The Australian dollar as a commodity currency, you know, isn't um, doesn't strengthen in a risk off environment, although it is benefiting from higher commodity prices due to, um, you know, uh, uh, I guess, uh, uh, scarcity um, in uh, and supply chain problems. Moving on to gold, finally gold. Gold going higher and higher, right? Gold is broken out of this, uh, of this area here um, and it's really again due to uh, more risk off sentiment and probably inflation worries right lots of inflation worries um, in the market right all around the world and gold is a hedge against inflation so when you have you know risk off sentiment as well as rising inflation that should you know that should and I, I use the word should and typically usually does appreciate gold so this is what you're seeing uh, right now with with the price of gold going higher so if you are you know taking that trade idea um, any pullbacks into a demand zone are you know buy opportunities in it in fact that should really be um, supply so um, so from that from that angle from that trade idea I think this is actually a really nice um, buying opportunity um, on gold any kind of pullbacks into a, a nice demand zone uh, you can probably look at the top of this area as well because you do have some horizontal uh, support or resistance should turn to what support but I probably prefer uh, that area there I think prices could maybe come down to that uh, 1851 but again you'd have to have the perfect mix I guess of risk off as well as rising inflation yeah if you if, if risk starts to come back on then it's it's a bit more of a difficult one to trade gold but once you start to have you know the tensions in 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 the ukraine and russia start to ramp up lots of uncertainty as you've seen um then that's really what adds as a catalyst uh you know for gold if you are looking to short gold for whatever reason um then now i think is a decent point a uh, decent time you've also got a bit of an area up here but that area i think has been touched a couple of times Let's go back a little bit, yeah. So really, I think the range is more to do with the, the absolute uh, all-time high, which was two thousand and seventy-five dollars. That's really where the range is at the moment. So, um, so if you think prices will start to continue going higher, 
then that is really uh, uh, where you're looking at you know uh, trend trading and just looking for pullbacks to kind of ride it up to um, you know the all-time high potentially so again inflation keeps if inflation keeps rising the uh, risk remains off then gold uh, should be a buy anyways guys that's it for this week hope you enjoyed the analysis and until the next video take care